Welcome back to the wondrous minefield that is my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be finding out how to diagnose a leak in an air locker. And it probably won't be interesting. So for the last couple of years, my rear air locker has been doing some unusual things. Firstly, it'll only engage when the tank is at full pressure. And secondly, it leaks out of the breather like a third world lady of the night. So I'm going to take it apart and try to diagnose it. Not necessarily fix it because I don't have the parts. So let us continue. So to begin this marvelous demonstration, first, you can see the compressor is on, the tank's at full pressure. And then we can let the car play you the song of its people. That noise you can hear is all the air coming out of the breather. And then the compressor kicks back in. Now obviously, this is not ideal. And because I don't know exactly where it's leaking, I can't really go about ordering parts that will definitely fix it. Now what I'm hoping is a loose internal fitting or a cracked bit of braze rather than the seal itself failing because I don't really want to have to go and find an obscure seal that ARB is probably going to charge me a million dollars for. So we're going to learn how to find out what's wrong with it using basic hand tools that you'll find around your home. So the first step in all this is to lift your vehicle up on a hoist. So once we're under here, obviously step one is gonna be drain the oil out of that one. Shortly followed by disconnecting all of this nonsense. So the other thing I'm gonna do here is reuse all the oil I'm getting out of here. Simply because I'm probably gonna to have to order some parts for this, like new seals. And it doesn't really make sense to drain the oil, put it all back together again with new oil, then do the same thing again once the new parts arrive if I need them. Now the nice thing about this is having these ridiculous shackles, because what that means is when both of the rear wheels are off the ground, the angle of that diff is pretty much in line with the shaft. And that's going to make it really nice and clean when I take out the diff, because it means I'm not going to get those little dregs spilling out everywhere. something for if you're in the situation I'm in where the shaft seems to be almost hydraulic pushed into the diff. If you just loosen that bleed screw, you'll let all the air out that's causing all that pressure and it'll let it telescope in much better.
might see if you read online is people clobbering these studs with a hammer. And that's a pretty silly idea for obvious reasons. So if you do get to the stage where you can't actually move these around with a screwdriver to pop them off, which that one did, that's obviously the ideal way to do it. But if you do have to shock them off, make sure you use a punch on the studs because that's not going to round the head of it unless you absolutely wail on it. And if you do get to the stage where you're having to hit it harder than you might expect, you're doing something wrong. Now, in case you're slow, the reason you have to take out this shaft is because it locks into your differential there. You can't pull out the diff center unless that's not there. You don't have to take them out all the way, but you've got to replace the seals anyway. So I figured I might as well. Now this thing is obviously a differential. They're not the lightest things in the world, but as long as you're not a potato, you should be able to manage it fine by yourself. Now unfortunately, I got a bit ahead of myself and forgot that I was making a video. But what I discovered when I opened this was this copper line here, which holds the air, was rubbing on this gear wheel. So obviously as this is spinning, this is gradually wearing a hole and it made a little pinhole in there. Now I've called the horrendous three letter monopoly company to get a quote for this. And you can only buy the entire seal setup, which costs around $200. And for the sake of just replacing a small bit of hose, I've decided I'm just gonna repair this instead. And what I've done is chopped out the broken section of the pipe, which you can hopefully see here in its blurry goodness. There you go. Not quite a pinhole, but still not good. And I'm gonna use a 1 8 compression fitting like that. What I'll then be able to do is use this retaining bracket bolt to add another bracket here to stop this happening in the future. Because as you pressurize and depressurize these lines, they're obviously gonna move slightly as they flex. So I think that's a good preventative measure to stop this happening in the future. Now, as you can imagine, this is quite an obvious leak, and I found it just by pushing some air in here, and seeing that the air was obviously leaking out of that damaged bit of hose. And that's about it. Air lockers are not complicated devices, so literally anybody could do this. Not really. In the meantime, I'm just gonna clean up all these mating surfaces to make sure they're clean and ready to go back in when the parts arrive. Now this is a start of the cleanup process. Obviously I'm gonna do a lot more cleaning up than this, but that's about it. 
Now seeing as this job wasn't finished today, it's obviously going to have to be a two-part video. So you're going to have to subscribe to find out what happens in the end. Thrilling.